Hi everyone, welcome to Bite Size Med, where we talk about quick, bite-sized concepts in medicine for study and rapid review. This video is on the micturition reflex. Micturition is the emptying of the bladder once it gets filled. The bladder fills until the pressure crosses a threshold, triggering the micturition reflex, which empties it. Let's take a look at the structure a bit first. That's the kidney with the calyces and the ureter, the bladder, and the urethra. Females have a shorter urethra than males. The bladder has a body where the urine fills and a neck. The lower part of the bladder neck, which continues with the urethra, is called the posterior urethra. The wall of the bladder has smooth muscle. That's called the detrusor. When the detrusor contracts, the bladder pressure increases. This is the trigone on the posterior wall, which has the openings of the ureters. The bladder neck has a muscle called the internal urethral sphincter. This muscle is involuntary. As long as the urethral pressure is higher than the bladder pressure, continence is maintained. If the urethral pressure falls or the bladder pressure rises, there'll be incontinence. This is the external urethral sphincter. This is voluntary versus the internal sphincter, which was involuntary. So it's in, under the control of the higher centers in the brain and the brainstem. To understand the micturition reflex, first we need to understand how the bladder is innervated. There are motor and sensory nerves. There are three nerves that you need to remember. The pelvic nerves, the hypogastric nerve, and the pudendal nerve. The pelvic nerves have sensory fibers and parasympathetic fibers. The sensory fibers pick up stretch from the stretch receptors when the bladder fills. The parasympathetic nerves from the sacral spinal cord, that's S2, 3, and 4, they act via acetylcholine on the M3 receptors. That causes contraction of the detrusor and relaxation of the internal sphincter. So the parasympathetic system causes emptying of the bladder. The sympathetic fibers go via the hypogastric plexus from, the, from L2 on the spinal cord, and they act on the beta-3 receptors on the detrusor muscle. So it relaxes the detrusor muscle, and the effect that they have on the alpha-1 receptors of the sphincter causes contraction. So it's opposite to the action of the parasympathetic fibers, and sympathetic fibers are responsible for storage. So S for S is a quick way to remember it. So the urine reaches the bladder from the calyces in the kidney by the ureter. The urine stretches the calyces and that produces peristalsis. The ureter passes obliquely through the detrusor muscle. During peristalsis, the pressure in the ureter is high, so that keeps that portion open, ensuring flow into the bladder. When the bladder fills and the pressure in the bladder rises, the detrusor muscle compresses that portion of the ureter to stop backflow. So now we get to the micturition reflex. So the bladder fills, the bladder stretches. The stretch receptors detect it, particularly at the posterior urethra. The sensory signals go to the sacral spinal cord, back through the parasympathetic fibers, causing contraction of the detrusor and relaxation of the internal sphincter. But the bladder is only partially filled, so the contractions will stop after a while, the detrusor relaxes, and the pressure goes back down to baseline. As the bladder keeps filling, the reflexes get more frequent and more powerful. This is a self-regenerative reflex. Stretch, contract, repeat. After a while, the reflex fatigues. Regeneration stops and the bladder relaxes. Once the micturition reflex gets strong enough, it causes another reflex through the pudendal nerve, inhibiting the external sphincter to relax it, followed by emptying of the bladder. So this entire reflex is an autonomic spinal cord reflex, but it's under the influence of higher centers, the pons and suprapontine centers. The pontine micturition center, the PMC, by default, it tries to trigger the voiding reflex. The cortex has an inhibitory influence on the PMC until the situation is appropriate. So for voluntary micturition, the brain releases its inhibitory effect on the pons. There's contraction of the abdominal muscles, which causes the bladder pressure to rise. The urine enters the posterior urethra under pressure. The stretch receptors get stimulated, followed by the reflex, resulting in the contraction of the detrusor, relaxation of the internal sphincter, and simultaneous relaxation of the external sphincter, causing emptying. Lastly, let's just look at a few things that could go wrong. 
So let's look at three situations, damage to the sensory nerves, damage to the spinal cord above the sacral cord, and damage to the brain above the pons. An atonic bladder is when the sensory nerves are damaged. So if the nerves are damaged, the stretch can't be detected, so the reflex can't be triggered. The bladder will then fill to capacity and then overflow. That's overflow incontinence. An automatic bladder results from damage to the spinal cord above the sacral cord. The sacral cord is intact, so the reflex is intact. In the initial spinal shock phase, the reflex is suppressed because of the sudden loss of influence from the higher centers. But when it recovers, the reflex can be exaggerated. So there is a spastic overactive bladder which empties too frequently. But if both the detrusor and the external sphincter are spastic at the same time, then it's called detrusor sphincter dyssynergia. Normally, one must contract while the other relaxes. Here, despite a desire to void, only a small amount of urine dribbles out. If there is a brain lesion above the pons, causing loss of inhibitory control over the pons, the bladder will empty too quickly and too often, even with small volumes of urine. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you in the next one.